Hello, everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Um, I already started this show on Instagram Live, but I'm going to go ahead and welcome all of the people on Facebook and YouTube because I know that there's a lot of people that follow me on there. And today, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that I still have lying around from getting... Oh, there's still dirt on this. Uh, this is a pig mandible, by the way. And um, I still have all this stuff lying around on my desk from teaching the Nature Journal family. And so I thought, why don't I just do a live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram all at the same time to just give a little bit of benefit and value to all the people that follow me on those platforms who aren't doing the Nature Journal family. And if you do have a family, if you have kids and you're homeschooling or you're not homeschooling, you should definitely check out that program. You can learn more about it on my website. I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to my document camera right here, and we're gonna do some fun drawing exercises. So I hope that you have some drawing supplies um, with you. At the very least, just a pen and paper, and I'm gonna go through and show you some of the stuff that I've been doing lately and draw some of these things that I have here. I've been doing a lot of color matching lately, which has been really fun. This is practicing trying to match this color of this lichen. This lichen is such a challenge. It has such a cool color, and depending on the way the light hits it, it can look quite different. So I've been practicing trying to match that color, and you can see, like, as I hold it up to the Instagram camera, um, you can really see that it its color changes quite a bit depending on the, the way the light hits it. And that's mostly a question of value. And really, value is one of the most important things um, in terms of art and capturing the essence of something in real life. So this is a page where I was trying to do that with a kid that I teach in the field. If you're in the Sonoma County area, I do COVID safe nature journaling one-on-one -on -one or small group teaching. And I've been doing that for about six years. And I also am doing, and I just got done today, doing an online class with the Nature Journal family. And that is where we all get together with multiple families and learn about nature journaling. It is super fun and it's for the whole family. So if you have a family or know someone who does, it's a great way to get engaged with the nature in your area as well as um, learning and seeing some of the stuff that I bring to the show. So I always bring like weird stuff that I have around here. I bet you don't know what that is. Um, and look at this thing that I found while teaching nature journaling the other day. And this is this crazy morning cloak butterfly. So I think we're gonna start with this. Get your pins and pencils ready, um, your paper ready, because we are going to um, look at this butterfly real quick and I thought it was dead when I found it and it has moved a little bit and so curious about that um, but if you have a pen and pencil ready let's just go ahead and try to get some quick sketches of this um, and if you're on Instagram you're gonna have to go for a little bit of a further out um, perspective on this but at, at the very least you do have a view of the subjects um, that we're going to be looking at. So let me get it here so that everybody can see it. Um, I think that'll work. And so let's just do a quick sketch. I'm messing around with this um, this new pen. It's a fountain pen that was recommended to me by um, Maria Ermolova on one of my Nature Journal show um, interview episodes, and it's been really fun. So just trying to get like a quick sketch of the overall shape of something and not worrying too much about getting it perfect is such an important thing to know how to do. And this is something that we're practicing today um, in the Nature Journal family, um, that class that I do on Zoom. And it's a monthly class. So if you know anyone that has kids um, stuck at home, bouncing off the walls, you know, needing to connect with nature and needing to connect with other kids, this would be the perfect thing for them um, signups are open right now for the month of April and, um, it's great. It's a once a week thing. So if you know anyone with kids, uh, let them know about it. You can send them to my website or my Facebook page and there's descriptions of the nature journal family on both of those places. 
So one thing that's really important, and this is something I did not know how to do for a long time, is like how to just be bold and make a lot of dark marks quickly. How can you make a lot of dark very quickly? So this pin right here, this fountain pin is great for that. And that's one of the things I love about it most because there's certain subjects like this butterfly that, you know, a lot of us, we think of things in outlines. When we try to draw, we think of things in outlines and we might simply just try to draw the outline of something. And for this, the outline would not be the information that you need. It would not be the most important information. Really the important information is um, this contrast between light and dark that you see on this butterfly. So check that out right there for all of you on Instagram. See that contrast between light and dark. That is really the important thing. That is really what you need to capture. So whatever tool you're using for drawing, you need to know how to make darks fast. Okay, so well, we finished with that one and let's go on to the next subject. So get your pens and pencils ready if you're following along and see how quickly you can capture this, um, the shape of this next subject. Okay, are you ready? Here it comes. And if you're on Instagram, you get to see like my whole desk. So it's not as, it's not as tricky for you. Um, so let's draw this. And um, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you have a great perspective on this. Um, if you're on Instagram, you just gotta focus on that thing right there. I know that it's kind of far away but I don't think that there's a way that I can zoom in on, oh, look at that, holy cow. There is a way that I can zoom in during a live. Oops, now I'm in the, how do I go back? Oops. Anyways, I think that's zoomed in now. Um, working on this technology stuff here. Okay, so now let's see how we can capture the basic shape of this item. And this is a bone. This is a neck bone from a cow. So like, what is the important information to capture and how can you capture it quickly? Because in nature journaling, we're really thinking about priorities and hierarchy. Like what is it, what is the important information? What is less important? Because we often are in the field. We might be nature journaling in extreme conditions. I know that I love to do that personally and we just might not have the time. So what is the important information to capture? How can you capture it quickly? And if you can't capture it with drawings, how can you use words? And if you don't have color, why don't you use your words to describe the color? If you can't uh, capture the smell in a drawing, then try to use words. How would it work if you used words? And, oh, trying to figure out how to do this on the Instagram and get it zoomed in nicely. Okay, so we've got one subject, we've got two subjects. I'm gonna go ahead and put numbers next to them because that makes it more official. Subject number two, get ready for subject number three. Oh shoot, you can already see subject number three. Actually, no, I'm gonna trick you. We're not gonna do that, screw that. Okay, we're gonna do this. It's a multiple, multiple choice um, option here. And let me make sure that Instagram can see it as well. So right now we're gonna do a collection of items. And so a lot of times in nature, you will see things like this. I remember when, when I went on Tanzania, on safari in Tanzania, I had to draw like herds of wildebeests. And it's like, how do you draw a collection of things? Um, all all mixed together. So this is our subject right now, these beans. See how you can capture that really quickly um, in a drawing, um, maybe using some words if you really need to because you might not be able to capture those colors, for example. Like, let's just try to get those in really quickly. Pretend like it's a herd of wildebeests. And I don't know, with my drawing tool, I might not really be able to, well, that looks like an upside down smiley face. Um, I might not really be able to capture any like idea that there's this difference between these values. I might not really worry about that. Um, but I could use little arrows pointing to them. And let's see if I can do this in less than one minute. These are both basically the same color. Um, pinkish. So how can you capture information more quickly 
how can you not worry about perfect drawings? And whether you're a fine artist or you're a nature journaler or you're a naturalist or some kind of scientist um, or an engineer or whatever, learning how to capture information visually is, is an important skill. And I feel like, you know, we learn math and we learn we learn reading and writing and arithmetic, but drawing should be in there too, because drawing is a transferable skill that applies to all these other things. So why didn't we get taught that in school? Okay, I'm gonna eat one of these dried figs that I have over here. Yum, okay. So that's number three. All right, what's next? Okay, next up is, dun, 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 dun. will this even fit? So I'm going to make this so it actually doesn't fit, and that's probably good. For you, for anyone who's following along with these exercises on Instagram, you're going to have a different perspective than everybody on um, YouTube and Facebook, but I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. So what is the important information to capture here? So this is item number four. Let's quick sketch this one. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more on this one so you can see my drawing. Um, what is the important information to capture here? And I'm going to draw it from uh, my perspective, not from the camera, the Facebook and YouTube camera, because that'll be a little bit confusing for me. What is the important information to capture here? I'm noticing these holes right here that don't have any teeth in them. That's kind of interesting. Uh, another important thing is quantification. So this is actually something where the number of teeth is really important. If you're drawing skulls and you are just guessing on the number of teeth, that's not the kind of thing you want to guess on. It's okay to guess on like, you know, some of these other details perhaps, but the number of teeth is super critical for identification. So don't guess on that, count that. If you're just doing fine art and it's just for some, you know, you're trying to you know, whatever, create a new character for the next Pixar movie or whatever, then that's fine to make up the number of teeth. But if you're actually drawing a subject from nature and you want to actually make something um, that conveys the information of what that is, then count the number of teeth. So I'm seeing one, two, I'm seeing two of these big molars, and then I'm seeing these, which are kind of like carnosials, but they're not. They're like premolars. Um, this is an omnivore an omnivore. I mean, pigs are omnivores. If you fell on the ground in front of a pig and were just writhing there in a tempting um, sushi roll kind of pose, you might be eaten. So they have teeth that are capable of processing different types of uh, food items. Oh, my drawing's not showing up in the video anymore because I'm over here on the side. Um, and let me see if I can zoom out a little bit on the Instagram. There you go. Hi, everyone on Instagram. Oh, Diario de Naturaleza is here. Saludos. Karen Colson is here. Um, all right. So counting the number of teeth is critical. What types of teeth are they? So one, two, three, four. See, I already started to, it's really easy as just an artist to be in this habit of kind of making things up. Um, certain natural subjects, though, you have to be precise about the numbers of teeth, for example. So I'm trying not to make that up. Um, this was going to be a quick sketch. I'm just going to point an arrow to that opening where I see there's a tooth missing or a tooth has not grown in yet. And I'm going to get this quick sketch in here. There's what looks like a canine there. And one thing, too, is that I love about nature journaling is that Nature journaling normalizes talking to yourself. So talking to yourself has been stigmatized for many years as a sign of mental health issues. However, I think talking to yourself is actually a great um, asset to your mental health. And nature journaling shows you that talking to yourself has other benefits as well. So when you're drawing, talking to yourself can help you notice things more. It helps you with retention. You'll remember things better. So talking to yourself is fine, um, even if you're in public. And what I do is I just try not to worry about thinking about other people thinking about what I'm thinking about. Okay, so let me get this. Looks like I smudged a little bit of ink, and that's because this is a water-soluble 
water soluble pen that I'm using. I haven't found the right ink to replace it yet. I think I need a adapter or something like that. This is the Sailor Food Day Demonin pin that Maria Ermolova recommended to me in that interview that I did with her quite a while ago. And if you haven't seen that interview, go check it out on my YouTube. It's awesome. And she talks about nature journaling in multiple languages, which she does. She nature journals in French, English, Japanese, and um, French, English, Japanese, and Russian. Uh, mostly, mostly Russian, Japanese, and English, um, and some French, I noticed. But uh, how cool is that? And she recommended that I try this pen, and I've been using it. And it's quite fun. It's really good at getting these darks in really quickly. So I think I've got a quick sketch there, and that's number four. So we're going to do one more thing, because today we're only doing a little bit. It's Friday night. Everybody wants to go party after this. I know you want to get some party on, and if nature journaling is not your style of partying, then you're just here for a little bit, and then you're going to go party afterwards. Can't blame you. You know, it's COVID, so there's probably not very many parties going on. Um, maybe this is your version of a party. So next, we're going to do this, and I'm going to zoom in more. So YouTube and Facebook, you're not going to see my drawing that much, but you're going to see this item. And this is an ancient, ancient plant that probably coexisted with some of the dinosaurs. And we are going to try to sketch it right now. So I'm going to put it here. Hopefully you have a, a little bit of a perspective of it. Um, otherwise, for all of you on Instagram, you can just watch me draw it. I know it's not quite as fun that way, but... So I'm going to take the food I did on end pin and use the fat side because look at how much ink you can get out of that fat side. Just a quick number in there. Um, and now I'm going to go into it. Let's see if I can get this structure. And this is such a cool plant. So, so cool. Um, herbalists use it for brushing their teeth or something, I think. And I think it's even used – it has been used for like sharpening swords or for um, – sandpaper because it has so much silica that um, compared to, I think a lot of plants have silica, like supposedly bamboo has a lot, um, but this plant, Echisetum horsetail, has a lot of silica. You could feel it. You could even buff your fingernails. It could be like a special spa treatment. Uh, if you want to buff your fingernails or sharpen your samurai swords or, you know, similar, similar tasks such as that, um, this is the plant for you. Put some in your garden. The dinosaurs loved it. I'm sure they uh, buffed their fingernails with it and sharpened their samurai swords. And I'm running out of space, and I have this cone that I have to do. So one of the things with drawing is your brain will automatically start shrinking things um, when you um, are running out of space, and that can be a huge problem. So... Uh, try to pay attention to that and not mess up your proportions. Um, either change what you're drawing or just overlap the other thing. Like right now I just went with, okay, screw it. I'm just going to draw over this other stuff. I don't care. Otherwise, just crop your drawing before you get to that point. Because what you don't want to do is like, say I'm drawing a person right here. Do, do, do. Here's my person. Here's the legs. I get up here. Here's the arms. Um, Oh gosh, I'm running out of space. Let me make the head. And then I make the head like that big because <laughs> I'm running out of space. And then now I messed up the proportions of this person. So uh, don't do that. And this happens a lot with calligraphy as well. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it happens a lot with calligraphy as well. You're running out of space and then you squeeze something and it's not quite right. So be careful of that. Um, I see Arlene is saying that you can't see that. I know it's, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get it to focus in on the, the plant, Arlene. Um, it's the contrast. I think that is the problem. It's, too dark compared to everything else. But let's see if me holding it up there for a second gives you a chance to at least get a little bit of sketch in of this plant. And I'm, I'm seeing that Suzanne is mentioning that it's also called scouring rush. And I think that's probably because people have used it for washing dishes. 
And in a second, I'll use it to buff my fingernails. And then I think I'll end this video at that. So remember, in nature journaling, you can use words. And some people might think, oh, gosh, if I add words, it's going to make my drawing look so uh, so plebeian or whatever. But, um, you know, words can add a lot of information. You could add something about the smell, about the color, about things that you couldn't capture with your drawings quite as quickly. Um, like one thing I'm noticing is there's, that there's this yellow dust coming off of this. And people say, oh, an image is worth a thousand words. But when you have to make that image by the sweat and tears of your own pen, that's totally different. So in that case, a word is actually often worth a thousand images. So we're going to wrap this up here because this is just like a little micro show. And if you didn't already know that I do once a week or twice a week longer shows that are actually planned out, where I actually like think about what I'm going to put in instead of just like making it up at the last minute, then if you didn't know that already, check out my YouTube and at Marley Pfeiffer. You can find me on Instagram at Marley Pfeiffer. If you're watching on Instagram, you already know that one. And I do at least once a week, usually twice a week, I'll do an interview with someone who's nature journaling or a nature artist or a scientist doing cool things, studying cool stuff like maybe snakes. I don't know. And all kinds of neat things on that channel. So definitely check that out. This was just a fun, quick exercise to show you that you can draw, you can nature journal every single day of the week. It's not that hard. That was just 20 minutes of time, you know, like how long does it take for you to drink your coffee? Mm. I spent 20 minutes today drinking coffee and reading the newspaper. Instead, you can nature journal. So definitely check out my YouTube channel um, if you haven't already. And if you know any families, tell them to check out my website, Marley Piper. And on that website, you can see the nature journal family that I do every single month. And every single month, I provide a really fun um, course and it's once a week. You can bring your entire family, even if you have 20 kids, you could bring all 20 of your kids and um, learn about nature journaling for two hours a week for a full month. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, it's been fun. I love every single episode. It's really great to bring cool people to you, share fun things with you. And I just had a little bit of extra time today, this Friday evening. And guess who I wanted to spend that extra time with? I want to spend it with all of you on Facebook and YouTube and on Instagram. Thanks for joining in. That's it for today. I will see you next time on Sunday. I'm going to be doing a live show. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.